Welcome to Off Center Podcast. I am your host, Leandria. This is a podcast for people like myself who are trying to navigate through this life of ups, downs, and of course, social media. I'll be giving you a look into my own personal battles along with a wide range of guests who are willing to lay it all on the table. Let us know how they got through and how they're getting through. So join me every Saturday as we unpack issues, create community, and most importantly, keep it all the way real. So right now, stop what you're doing and head over to Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Like and subscribe. You don't want to miss a beat. Welcome to Off Center today, guys. I am so glad to be here with Tamika and Reagan. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hey. Welcome. I'm so excited for you all to be here today with me and to have this conversation. So let's jump right into it. Okay. Last week, um, we discussed... One of um, my guests on last week, we discussed how she stopped going to church. Nicole, question. Are you, um, do you attend church now? No. Or you left? Okay. I was really big in church in Illinois. Um, I served in a lot of different ministries. Um, went to Texas. <laughs> and it just wasn't it, okay? <laughs> like, I think... You just need, and I, it's not all pastors. I'm not saying yeah. that, but I've attended a lot of different churches. And when you go to just sit there and you listen, and then you hear a pastor talk about one thing, and he's not getting the response that he wants, so he jumps to a good old faithful line, and you looking like this ain't having anything to do with this. <laughs> I try to small, like smaller churches, to be more intimate, and those mm-hmm. I think are, can sometimes be the worst because it's a little too intimate, and people think that they know you because they see you a couple times a week, and it's like, yeah, you don't, you don't know me though. Like, like, yeah. like I bite my tongue here, but would you go yeah. back? Um. I'm really undecided about that. Do I, I because of some reasons, um, sh- um, just a lot of reasons that she had that she felt as if that was no longer the place for her to be, and I'm starting to see that a lot in our communities and within just our different generations that we have just decided we're going to leave the church, but we're not going to leave God. And I think it's a good time to have that conversation, seeing as though it's so much happening in the world and around us where we would think we would be running toward him and not leaving him inside of the sanctuary per se. It can be various reasons why people are leaving the church. You know, before it was the pandemic, we can't come to church because of the pandemic. I can't come out. I don't want to be around people. Y'all still not wearing masks. I need to be safe in my home. But now we're kind of all past, I would say like the pandemic is still alive and well. There are still people catching and getting sick, all this stuff. But it's, we picking and choosing what it is that we want to do. Um, and we're using it as a, an excuse or a tool to say, oh, I can't come to church because of whatever the case may be. But you look at their Instagram, they went to brunch, they off on vacation there. And people can do whatever they want to do by all means. However, when it comes to the church, it's kind of like we find validity in not going because one, there are so many live streams that are taking place. Instead of me having one pastor, I can have four and I can have four in different states at different times. And people just finding like different reasons of why um, they don't need to come to church. Another reason could be and it's sorry to say this weak attachments. What type of member were you before the pandemic happened? Did you have a real attachment to the church in the first place or were you just going out of obligation? Were you just going because this was your grandmother's church or your mom's church and this is where your whole entire family went? And when the pandemic happened, you were like, yes, I have a valid reason of not to come back. So it's just like it's so many different things that I can give you a whole list of reasons why people have told me why they stopped coming to church. Mm -hmm. But it's you know, it's it all depends on the person and the things that they're actually seeking for at this place in their life. So, yeah, Tamika, all I'm going to say is 
the people may want to tussle after listening <laughs> to what you just said. They might want to tussle, Tamika. <laughs> they may want to tussle. <laughs> I'm sorry, Reagan. You can go ahead. No, you're good. I think I ditto everything she said. And um, also, thank you for having me on this podcast today, by the way. Um, but I, th- I think it's it's such a culmination of things. Um, I think that sometimes when the going gets tough, people either get rough or they get tough. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, through the pandemic, it really was a pruning. Um, it was the Bible says that in the last days that he's going to sift the church through mm. as wheat and as tares. Yeah. So I think what we're really seeing, it's kind of like what, sh- what uh, Sister Tamika said about you know, what were they already like before the pandemic? You know, they already kind of had a terror spirit that said, I'm not really dedicated. I'm not really committed, even though, you know, I, I love church. I love God. Yeah. But um, even when you love something, you have to set in your mind, set in your heart, set in your spirit that, OK, I'm going to be committed because, mm-hmm. you know, if if love was the only thing that kept us together, then so many people wouldn't have got a divorce. Um, mm-hmm. You got more than love. You have to have commitment, dedication, mm-hmm. boundaries, and um, you have to have set a standard for yourself. And it is hard. I think that there are, you know, uh, not to be uh, judgmental or rude. I think there's a lot of churches that are not operating in the power and the demonstration mm-hmm. of the Holy Ghost. And so people... Um, are realizing what's real and what's not. So people that didn't grow up necessarily the way I did, seeing the power of God, evidence yes. real, they're looking for really what's real. That's why they're saying, I'm not leaving God, I'm leaving church. They know that God is real and they they crave that relationship. Yes. But they are sick of the theatrics and the, 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 the fake pomp and circumstances. And believe me, I love those things. I love, you know, the things that we know as church, but some people, it's not going to be enough for them. They're going to have to have the power of the Holy Ghost. And I think that also, you know, God is really like we saw in the pandemic, God took a lot of the generals of the faith home. And I Mm -hmm. think it's causing people now to really stand on their own two feet and say, okay, as for me and myself, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to live yes. for God. So I think there's just a lot of people that, you know, when you have a bunch of stuff, I'm going to say this last thing and be quiet. When oh. you have a bunch of stuff and you have a lot of things um, and you don't have a need for a savior, then you think you can make it without him. But the reason why grandma and mom and dad and all them had such a devoted relationship is because, Growing up, they didn't have an iPhone. They didn't have everything that we have. They didn't have all of the worldly possessions that we have. And I'm not necessarily against these things that we have, but it uh, created a, a, they needed God. They really needed God to live and to do. And so I think that our generation, we feel like, well, I want God, but I don't necessarily need him. But the truth is, we couldn't have made it without him this far. It's just yes. they have the understanding of they've not real. They've been through things, but you know you haven't unless you've been through something that's caused you to stop and say, "Oh my goodness!" If the Lord doesn't intervene, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to explain that to somebody. Yeah, um, I'm going to say "ouch" and "amen" <laughs> <laughs> because. Right now where I am, um, I find myself guilty of not going because I'm just so tired. Yeah. I I just want to lay here today. I can, you know, we live stream on YouTube, so I can watch the live stream on YouTube. I don't necessarily have to go, but then they always remind me of that fellowship. Hmm. One with one with another, not necessarily just coming in to say, Hey, I heard that sermon today, but it's, you know, everything else that goes along with attending Sunday service. And I've been at, I've been in church my entire life. Well, from what I can remember, I've been in church, you know, so Sunday school and morning service and Bible class and drama club and just everything that we could think of, we did. And we were there. And sometimes I feel as though I will, I used to feel as though I put my time in. Let me do what I want to do on my Saturday and my Sunday. 
Um, but it always humbles me to know that I would not have gotten here, like Reagan said, without the Lord and without God. And it pushes me back to remembering where I came from and understanding that you cannot lay here today. Mm -hmm. You don't lay here and not go to work. Right. Amen. You Amen. don't lay here and, you know, not go out with your friends or not do this. So now I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm rededicating myself mm -hmm. to Lord. my commitment Thank and you, to Lord. the Lord. Um, because yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't have gotten this far without him. I know where I've been and I know where I've come from. Mm -hmm. So I know that those things that people look at and say, oh, you're so strong. I don't know how I could have done it is in me. I know that it was God that did that. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. who am I to say I can lay here? And it started to be, cause at first, at first it started off as now we're missing Sunday school and now we're missing Sunday service. And then they, they didn't made it easy for us. We have Bible class online. So now and now I do not have to deal with anybody in the church, whether I want to deal with them or whether I don't want to deal with them. I don't have to because everything has been placed in my house for me. Mm -hmm. But the disservice mm -hmm. is that now, how am I going there for and teaching all nations if I'm if I'm saying I don't want to leave the house? Mm -hmm. What kind of teaching or learning am I actually doing by just turning on YouTube? How can people grow from my testimony or or learn from my testimony if I'm not around to tell my testimony? Mm -hmm. right. So I've been in this space where and then even with me being a wife and a mother, it's things and a, a family member is things that, that I'm still looking for from God. So I had to tell myself and along with, you know, listening to my cousin saying, hey, you have to rededicate yourself. You have to get back to where, you know, and being a choir member. And now, not coming to church, I'm missing choir rehearsal. That's not, what type of dedication is that to my brothers and my sisters in my choir? What am I saying to them? What am I saying to the position that God has put me in? Because for you, what would that say to you being a member and I'm your member and you're like, hey, you know, because I think that's part of the conversation too. We don't have those conversations with other people that are like me right now that are drifting away or trying to find, figure out how to reconnect themselves back. So I just wanted to piggyback on something that you just said um, in reference to your recommitting yourself back, really back to God, but also stepping out of your household and coming back into the church, the fellowship. What I wanted to say was your, your commitment and your engagement is your motivation to keep going. Like you said, we show up for work all the time. We show up for our friends. We show up for what we want to show up for. But when it comes to God's house, it's to me, it's, and this has been going on for years. It seems like we always get shaky when it comes to the church. We could be stern about everything else and committed and just sure about everything else. But when it comes to the church, we're just like, mm, God understands. He, why does yeah. God always have to understand where we're coming from when he created us? Yes. And, and God does, honestly, he does not ask for much. He really does not ask for much. He just really wants us to believe in him, to love him, to trust him. And we give all of that to everything else and everybody else. And then we turn and look to God and say, hey, by the way, can you bless me? Yep. And he's like, you can't even, you can't even show up for me. Yep. Like, like you can't, you, you, you taking your tithes out of my house, but yet you, you on vacation. And yep. the word of God says, when two to three gather together in my name, I will be in the midst of it all. But then people say, well, it's, it's me, my husband, my kids, and my mama. It's, it's four of us. But it's nothing like fellowshipping in the house of God. Yes. Being in the presence of God's temple. Being among God's people. Just like they say, they've been saying for years, the church is a hospital full yes. of sick people who need healing. Yes. And a lot of times we're recreating our own hospitals. We don't have the medicine. We don't have the resources. We don't have the life support to keep us going. And right. we need to get back to the hospital 
and yeah. to do what it is that God called. Now, if you're in a situation where you've been going to a toxic church, that's something totally different. Mm-hmm. There are thousands of churches in this this nation that we can go to. Yes. Find one that's fitting for you. I had a friend who left my church for you know personal reasons, and he had a valid reason why he left. And um, he would drop his daughter off because I used to be a Girl Scout troop leader. He would drop okay. his daughter off all the time um, during the week. And I would ask, like, is your dad outside? And she's like, yeah, he out there. So I would run out, say, hey, have you found a church yet? And he's like, nah, I think I'm just I'm gonna think I'm gonna just throw in the towel. Like, I'm done. I can't find nothing. So I gave him a name of another church that wasn't my church. <laughs> and I said, listen, try this. Try this church. If it don't work, I don't know. We'll find yeah. something else. He went to that church. His brother got saved. His best friend got saved. Come and he on. found his wife. Come on. At that church. Come and on. So God. had I not been obedient to what right. God told yes. me, to, you, don't, right. you don't have to be here. You don't have to be in this but house. But you have, you to, have be to be somewhere. In, you have to be in God's house somewhere. Yes. But it's been such a blessing for him since he left and went to this. And I'm glad he was obedient enough yes. to go. So we just never know just ministering to people. And we don't, some people can't handle the type of church that we have. Some people like y'all a little bit too rowdy. Some people like y'all a little too quiet. Find out your people and yeah. send them in the right direction. Let God lead you. So, yeah. Good. That That's was, good. that. praise God. That was a, that was a wonderful, awesome testimony right there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, and, and the key thing that I heard out of that entire story was the obedience. Yes. Um, we often hear God and don't move. Or no. we hear God and say, is that really him? My God. Send another sign so I can, so I really know it's really you. Or do something else. So I, And it's like, why are you looking for signs and wonders? Like, mm. you know, and that's the, and sometimes, you know, and me. Ouch. I used to think and I used to think I'll ask for forgiveness later. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. learning that more and more as I walk this walk with with God. Um, even within this podcast, it's nobody but God. Because no. <laughs> No, um, I was not the one that wanted anyone to know my name, know what I like. I, I'm fine with being in the shadows, but I know that God has told me that my I can save people. My story and who I am, this is who what I can do. I can save people. And that's my goal to create a community in which you feel safe to have those conversations because that's the conversation that we're having at church right now, you know, just trying to build our church, trying to figure out, you know, how to get out there and save the lost, how to get out there and do the great commission because he gave us all the tools. And my pastor said something Sunday and he said, he, all he wants to do is use our body, use our person. He's going to do everything else. He's going to tell you what to say. He's going to tell you where to go. He's going to handle everything. All he wants you to do is go. And I think right. that's where that's where the fear comes from, the go. Reagan, you had a unexpected viral social media moment. Yes. Which puts you in the light. I didn't, I went viral on a social media account I didn't even have. I didn't have TikTok. Okay. Um, what trying to be TikTok famous because I was scared of the TikTok. <laughs> and I was like, this is not my thing. Like, I, I know I'm 23 and I, I know I'm an older Gen Z, but I'm really not. I have this saying that I was raised by old people who were raised by old people because my mom and daddy were older when they had me and my parents' parents were older when they had them. So I feel a lot older than I actually am. Um, So I just was like not anticipating that. Um, But the Lord uh, knows what's going to happen to us before we do. And I, uh, when it, when it happened um, and when it, when it, happened to me um i was just simply first of all we're talking about going to church i was just simply at church and um i was not anticipating it because um 
you know, what happened, let me just, for those of you that don't know, I went viral because I was the only white person in a Kojic church. And so, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, you know, people, they just think like, this is my first time in a Kojic church. They're like, what is going on? What is happening? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, you know, this is not my first time. Like, you know, like this is just first time y'all seeing me here. And so um, anyways, I was not going to go to church that morning. And, uh, I, well, actually it was, I had two services in between that service. It was at a, it was at two thirty, and I had said to myself, I was like, I've got a two hour drive after this middle, after the second service. I don't, I don't really need to go. Like, then I got there and you know, they was taking forever and they was honoring everybody. And I was like, Oh my Lord, if I don't get to sing, I'm going to have to go before it's time for me to sing. Cause I had to be somewhere. And anyways, the Lord, uh, just opened, um, that just opened the door for me and, um, I got to go. And so I was getting ready to leave. And then I got up and I sang and, you know, people were just like, Oh my goodness, who is this white Caucasian man? What is he doing? Why is he singing? I am still here by Dorinda Clark Cole. Like how does, what is going on? Like, you know what I mean? They were just like shook and, um, it was just completely unexpected. And then I just started going, so the preacher's daughter took a video of me, posted it on her social media, on her TikTok. I went viral and I had made a TikTok years ago. People started following it and um, things just started changing um, for me. And it's opened the door for me to meet with people and work with people and do things and uh, do things that I've been praying about doing and allowing. And, um, you know, to talking about going to church. Um, I was PK and I still am a PK and I have felt the pressure of like you going to church. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't have that mom and dad pressure or the grandma and daddy pressure of you need to get up and you need to go. But I've always had even, and my parents never like were like hateful about it, but they were very strong about we're going to church. And, uh, so it's part of the fabric of my DNA. It's just who I am. And I've realized as I've gotten older, um, after my dad passed away in 2020, I had to have a moment with myself because there were days I didn't want to go to church, but I was used to going to church. All I ever knew was church. And, um, I had to make up in my mind, either God is right. And the word of God is right. Or it's all a lie. It, it can't be halfway right. It can't be yeah. sort of right. It can't be, you know, some parts are true and some are not. Either God is a man that he should not lie. Yep. Or he's or he is a liar. Yes. And of course, we know that God is not a man that he should lie. But I had to have a real conversation with myself and say, okay, the world is only going to get more and more crazy. It's only going to get more and more evil. Yes, I don't have my father here anymore to help me, but he has raised me in, in the truth and in the word of God. And he has given me a, a what we used to call a Holy Ghost backbone, <laughs> <laughs> that ability, you know, to stand up for myself and yes. say no and to say yes and to know when to go through the door. So I had to have a real kind of Jesus meeting with myself and say, okay, I know you don't want to go to church because church reminds you of your dad. And that's all you ever done. But you're not held responsible for how you feel. You're held responsible. And you will be judged for what you did, not for how you felt. Mm -hmm. And when I had that realization, and I remember reading the scripture that, um, that says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself. Even and you sh- and then it goes on to say even more as you see the day approaching. What is it talking about? It's talking about the coming of the Lord. The closer that Jesus is to return, the more we should be together as a yeah. body. The more, and I believe that that's not just talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, or whatever you know your typical church services look like. But yes. I'm talking about more Bible studies, more fellowship with your brothers and sisters, more breaking of bread in your homes, more and more fellowship 
with the body of Christ. Yes. Now, I don't believe for a second, I'm sorry, I'm old school holiness, and I don't believe for a second that it's excluding church. Because if you think about what is the one thing that God said when he wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger in stone, what is the one commandment he said, remember? He said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. If you forget any of these, if you forget lying, cheating, adultering, that's not even a word. That's a country word I made up. If you forget all of these things, the Lord said it literally with his finger in stone, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So I believe that coming together, whether you have church on Saturday or Sunday, whenever that is, you need to remember that day and you need to go. Now, I'm not saying that all those other commandments were excluded, but I'm just saying there is an emphasis on if you can get this one right, I'm pretty sure the other ones will fall into line mm -hmm. because it's easy to live for God when you have fellowship and communion with the bride of Christ. But when you're not, you try to do it on your own. We can't do nothing in our own strength. Iron mm -hmm. sharpens iron. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And if we get this arrogant, haughty spirit of like, we can do it on our own, we will mess up. The Bible says pride comes before a fall yes. yeah. so, and a haughty spirit before destruction. So we have got to really do some soul searching and say, Lord, what makes me think I can do this on my own? Yeah. And I'm preaching to myself. I don't want anybody that's listening to this to think, oh, wow, well, it's easy for him to play because he grew up a gay. <laughs> well, no, I'm telling you, I've had to let the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the that Jesus is the Word made flesh. So the Bible is the Word. The Bible is a what? A sword. It's going to cut you every now and then. Not cut you so you can bleed out and die, but mm -hmm. so you can be molded and shaped yes. and carved and, and into the more uh, perfect image that God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just my um, that's just my story. And I'm sticking with it. Amen. <laughs> What's also incredible incredible about that viral moment, Reagan, is that you had it, you had your go moment in a place where you stood out. Yeah. You were not, you know, it could have you could have felt anything. You know, with that would have been scary for me to be in a place that I'm the only one of my kind in here to but that fear you you still allow you still took that moment and allowed God to use you because right. sometimes um and that's another thing that we because we should love all but sometimes those racial fears do occur yeah you know you may have felt that I don't I, you know I don't know but it's just it is just to God be the glory that you even regardless of that and even regardless of the people there not right. knowing you and seeing you and, and knowing he doesn't look like me. Right. And then the song that you sang, yeah. but they still God was still moving. God still moved in that. And you I know, and it was still shared. I think people are intimidated of what they don't know on both sides. Um, but I believe with all of my heart that we are better together. And I believe the scripture when it says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Yes. It wasn't an Amen. exclusive community or racial group. It was saying brothers and sisters, as long as you are claiming Jesus is Lord of your life. Yes. You are my brother and sister. I can yes. worship with you. I can fellowship with you. And I never, you see, the way I grew up, I didn't have even a concept of race until I was like maybe 13, 12 or 13 years old because mm -hmm. I was raised around black people, Hispanic people, Asian people. I went to a very diverse school. So I never thought about, oh, this I never, I didn't know that people got discriminated on because of the color of their skin. And so it wasn't until we moved away to a smaller town where it was, where it was segregated and it was more racial and it was more, they do their thing. We do our thing. And I thought, this is so crazy. This is bizarre. This is not at all 
you know, what God has intended Mm -hmm. for his body. Um, But I think that in, in us coming together, I feel like what people to another reason why people are leaving church is because we're malnourished. We need each other. Um, Tamika. So you've gotten, you have such an incredible light and you've been doing a lot. I want to know how would you feel about that viral moment? How would you feel about Mm -hmm. being placed in that light? So it would be, um, I wouldn't say that I will be a hundred percent prepared because like to be thrust in the, to the light like that would be probably like, mm, no, turn the lights off. I'm good. <laughs> Only because I'm such a under radar person. I like yeah, to be behind too. the scenes. I like to, you know, play the back a lot because that's just the way I was raised. I was always raised to be the helper, to be the support person, to always be just readily available when anybody yes. in the forefront needs help. But when I'm finding what I've found actually over the past few years is that the more I try to play the background, the more God pushes me forward. Yes. So it's just like, um, like for instance, I, I knew for a fact many years ago that I was called to preach. Okay. But I was like, God, not me. Mm-mm, nope. Find somebody else to do it. This is not my thing. I don't want to be in the front. You already know that that's not my place. But find this year, actually, no, no, last year, I finally was like, you know what, God, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of just hiding. Use me for your will and your will alone. Praise God. If it is that, if you want me to be in the forefront, so be it. Just prepare me for it. Help me to get through it. Yes, there's going to be fearful moments. There are going to be times where you just don't know who's watching you and who's saying what, Uh, but we really can't focus on this. I'm like, Lord, Lord, allow your voice to overshadow my own thoughts, regardless of what anybody else is saying, but what I'm saying to myself. So to, if I ever had a moment that went viral um, and if it's something, so I will say if I ever went viral as Reagan did, I would just hope that it would be something that gives God glory. Yes. Yes. I will honestly say that because, and that's why I'm very, very, not saying I'll be behind the scenes doing ratchet stuff because, you know, that's not what I'll be doing, but it's just like, I, I try my best to live the way I live on camera. I live off camera. Yeah. So I, I'm careful with how I engage with people, how I talk to people. Do I always get it right? No, because, you know, we all make mistakes. We're not perfect, but Anything that I do or anything that's noticed by anybody, whether it's one person or a thousand, I just hope that it gives God glory. I hope that it impacts their life, touch their life. So, you know, it's so that's just like, Lord, you know, whatever it is that you have me do, allow me to do it and give you glory, whether it's 10 people see it or whether the nation sees. I just pray that it gives him all the glory, honor and praise in anything that I do. Amen. And the pastor said that Sunday and he said, live something so that people can see it and ask you, how can they live that same life? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, and, and that's so important in the times that we're living in now, because people are always looking, looking at Christians in a certain light. So at any, any turn we fail or mess up, yeah, I knew it was coming. I mm-hmm. I knew it wasn't real. Just like with this whole little social media thing with um TD Jake supposedly running um the shade room on Instagram. And you're distracting people from the church by having this conversation. Right. Because we know t- everyone who's ever turned on a TV knows who T.D. Jakes is. Who's ever heard a preacher knows who T.D. Jakes is. And I feel like it's just people are always just looking to scrutinize and to to say that's not true. Or he's not what he said he is to discredit everything that he has ever said. And he could have... And he, you don't, he could be preaching fact, but that little thing, that one small thing that people see and they take as, and they take 
they take it and they use it to scrutinize every Christian or every little thing that happens in church because churches aren't perfect because we're people and none of uh, Mm -hmm. none of the people on this earth are perfect. So yes, we all make mistakes. And I think that that's the part that others fail to realize is that Mm -hmm. we're not here to be perfect. We're striving to be the best that we can be Mm -hmm. like you are. What I say to that is you're absolutely correct. But I will have to add to that, that we played as believers, we played a heavy part in the way that people see us because of how we, we preach one thing and we live a totally different life. We shout and dance and sing and falling all over the pews in church. But then outside the church, we cussing people out, running people down in traffic, just doing, and I'm guilty of it. I used to have terrible road rage. I was the type of person that would jump out of my car and chase you down. (laughs) I've I've done it before. I knock on your window. I used to be that person. And I remember when it happened, I had a young lady from my church, a mentee, in my car when it happened. And I said, look how foolish you look, acting like you acting in front of this young lady. And she looked up to me. Um, I was I was like her idol. And then next thing you know, she see me running down the street chasing after a car uh, because somebody did something. Yeah. I mean, the, pers- the person hit me and then sped off. And then I, I'm running, I actually... I don't know how, but I caught up with the car and called me flash, whatever you (laughs) come. But in that moment, I wasn't thinking straight. I'm like, I jumped out of a car while this young lady was in the car. I didn't know if that person had a gun. I didn't know if that person was crazy. The person was going to come out and fight. I didn't know. But we have to be mindful at all times to keep God at the fore. If you don't know what to say, you don't know how to react, say nothing and do nothing. Yes. Yes. Say nothing and do, even if you, when I say if you literally have to bite your tongue to the point of there's almost blood coming out, don't say a word because we are held accountable for what we say and what we do. Yeah. And our actions live in people's head versus what we say. The way you treated me will live with me much longer than what you say to me. Yes. So as believers, we have to not just talk the talk, but we have to also walk the walk. So yes. it's 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 just a lot that a lot of parts that we played in the narratives that the world are portraying. Because there are some things that I hear, and I'm just like, I can't I can't be mad at that because. They they're telling the truth. Yes. But it it really boils down to how do we fix this? How do we get to the point of fixing the things that we broke? Can I I think Oh um, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying I think we need to go on an apology tour. I was about to say and and apologize to all the people that we condemned, that we talked about, that we shunned, because they lived different than we did. Yes. So go ahead, Regan. I I just wanted to add to your point. I think that's so good. When you do mess up, though, and you do fall short of the glory of God, there's still grace for you and there's still enough blood for you to be renewed. You have, number one, you have to repent before God. Mm -hmm. You have to, the Bible says you confess your faults one to another. Don't be, everybody is sinning, okay? Everybody. Everybody. Why are we, that's the, we as the culture have to get to the point where we have to, instead of being shocked when people fall and make a mistake, we have to say, my brother, my sister, I've been there and I have Mm -hmm. messed up, maybe not the way you did, but in a, in a different way. Yeah. We have to be open about that. We have to own it. We have to say, you know what? I did that and I'm sorry. That's not who I am. It doesn't define what I've been, what I want to be. It's just what I did in the moment. And also we have to, when there's people that are involved that are not saved, we have to go to them. We have to say, Hey, I'm sorry that I was not representing Jesus the way I should have. I'm sorry that I did things wrong. I'm sorry that I did. That was inappropriate. That's not what a person who professes to be godly does. And I'm sorry for that. And I believe that when you do that, you know, my mom used to say, I try to live as close to the Lord as I can. And she goes, you know, if I did something wrong and 
and I and the Holy Ghost didn't bring it to my remembrance. God knows that, and love covers a multitude of sin. But if the Holy Ghost brings something to me and says, "You need to ask that person for forgiveness. You need to go and repent to that person. You better do it and obey mm-hmm. the voice of the Lord because that is the that's your window of opportunity to make mm-hmm. things right. If you wait. You know, there is a grace and mercy, thank God, that extends beyond yes. what we know or can even fathom. But mm-hmm. when the Holy Ghost is speaking to you to apologize to someone or to make things right, do it. Because yes. even if you didn't realize you were in the wrong, you know, when the Lord brings that back to your to your remembrance and says, hey, go say I'm sorry for what you said. The Holy Ghost has been doing that to me recently. I was We was at a dinner table with a bunch of ministers. And I said something that was a little windy, as Mama would say. <laughs> My mouth was just just going out of nowhere. And Mama go, and the Lord said to me, "You need to text those people, and you need to apologize for what you said." And I was like, "I didn't realize I said anything wrong." And He said, "You, it's it's not about what you think is right or wrong or not." And I thought, oh, "Okay, God." Mm-hmm. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. So I text him and I said, I just want to apologize for just being a little, you know, too wild and just letting my mouth just run wild. And I said, I don't, that's not the kind of person I want to be. That's not the kind of person I'm trying to be. Please forgive me. And each one of them said, Oh brother, you know, we love you. We know your heart. We know you. But even though they knew that, and even though it was good, it wasn't a negative implication. Think of how many times, we could have gone and done things and made things right before they got out of hand. Yes. But we were too prideful to say, I'm sorry. I messed yeah. up. And I believe that we have to choose what type of follower of Jesus Christ that we want to be. You had the followers of Jesus Christ who followed him, who like really yearned after him, who wanted to love him. But then you had the other followers of Jesus Christ who just walked around like the Pharisees and Sadducees and just wanted to condemn him and wanted yeah. to, they literally stalked Jesus everywhere he went just mm-hmm. so they can find wrong and fault in what he did. So we have to choose what side we want to be on. If we want to be a follower like a Sadducee or a Pharisee, or if we want to be an actual follower of Jesus Christ, do what it is that he called us to do, be an example as yep. he was an example and just do the right thing so i commend you for because god has done that to me he was like go apologize and i'm like dang Mm -hmm. do i have to he like yeah even if they don't accept your apology right be obedient to what i say so that you know just be obedient and do what i tell you to do so that's that's good a couple things i heard from both um reagan and also you tamika is that um that we need to be transparent. Right. Which is something that we often don't want to do. Um, because we're letting people too far in our business, which is another reason why a lot of people sometimes leave the church. Oh, y'all, y'all too far in my business. You asking too many questions, you want to know too much. How do we be that brother or that sister to to people that feel as if that's being in their business or that's just a little bit too close or too much information for you because now it's like I have to be vulnerable to a point where I have to trust you to where I may not like my my church I go to a church and our motto is a church where everyone is family yeah and it's a small church and we're literally a church where everyone is family so you'll get that Hey, you haven't been to church in in three Sundays. Or, hey, why haven't I seen you log on to Bible class? And you'll, you'll be asked these questions and you'll be called to the carpet and held accountable for, you know, those, those absences or where you kind of fall short. But it's not to, to pick on you. It's to say, hey, you know, I'm noticing some things and that's not like you. But I think part of the problem is a lot of people, I would say, feel, don't take it in that loving way. And sometimes they end up leaving because of how a conversation was said or had with them regarding how they how they are handling themselves when it comes to the church. I say leave with love. I th- 
one thing that we miss that we're beginning to miss is discernment. Have discernment. The first thing you should say to somebody is, are you okay? Instead of where you been, right. I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays. I could have been sick. I could have been depressed. I could have been, I could have attempted suicide, was in a hospital for a week in a psych war. You have mm-hmm. no clue what I've been through. Yeah. Yeah. So start lead with love. And I tell people all it like, this is why some of the people, mainly young people, stop coming to church because you, you, you're you picking at them every chance you get. And they're like, see, this is why I don't come. But if you leave with love, you hug them, embrace them yes. with genuineness, if that's a word. But it, you have to lead with the love of God. Yes. You, have, you have to be so in tune with the spirit. That your spirit is telling you something about that person. Yes. Right. Like something's not right, something's not off. Just go give her a hug. I've done that so many times to people. Just like, hey girl, like come here and I give them a hug. When I say they collapse in your arms, yes. Like this is all I needed. This is all I needed was somebody just to embrace me. Didn't say a word. All I did was hug them. And they felt the love. Yeah. So we have to be very, very careful. People are a lot more sensitive these days than they used to be back in the 80s and the early 90s. Ooh, I'm 38. I had thick skin coming up. I had to have thick skin coming up. Yes. But everybody, they're not, all the young people, they're not like that today. So we have to, not saying that you have to walk on eggshells and just like not say anything, but you got to be careful. Yeah. The right. suicide rate. Is much higher. It's like triple yes. what it was when I was younger. Yeah. These kids will take their lives because you said one of the, the, the wrong thing to them that day. Yes. Next thing you know, they're gone. So we have to learn to lead with love and be very, very mindful that nobody's perfect. We right. all going through something. I really like that lead with love. Um, I mean, hey, leave with love or lead with love. Either way, it works um, because <laughs> love is the only way to draw people. And the Bible said it with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Yeah. And we have to get back to the love and the kindness. And which is why I've been in my church for so long because of that love and that kindness and that and, and, and that genuine relationship that you get. God is good because he uh, put us in different positions to, to understand and see those things. Because I see so much of my, I'm 35, so I'm a little bit younger than um, Tamika, but a little bit older than Reagan. But I see myself in both areas. Hmm. Um, I see myself in both, in both areas, um, spiritually and um, just in my character as wanted to be, you know, dialed down a little. I'm here to help the sidekick, the sous chef, you know, those things. The the I'm not, I don't need you to know who I am. I'm here with them. You know, you know them, then we're fine. Um, but as Tamika said, God always has a way of of creating a space for you. Hmm opening up that that space for you to be what he's called you to be without fear um and without just without fear and the freedom of knowing that if I go he'll leave me. Yeah. Um and being thankful that he is leading because I couldn't I couldn't lead this ship on my own. Um but this has been a great conversation. And I hope that this conversation sparks other conversations with other people, whether it is home, within the church, with and friend groups, but having those conversations about our faith because the end is near and we need to know who God is. Yes. We need to know where we'll be spending eternity. Um, and I think that it's important for us to to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Mm-hmm. Um, that was his great commission. That's what he has called us to do. And that's what we should find ourselves doing. Um, and myself included. And I'm guilty of that. And now I find myself asking God, put someone in my path. That I can tell them about your goodness. Mm-hmm. Tell them about how you got me through 
how you're getting me through. And, and that's my prayer for everyone that we stop and we ask God to put people in our path that we may introduce them to him and bring them to him because this, this, this life is rocky as it is without having a savior. So I Mm -hmm. could not imagine how people that do not know him get through. I just pray that whomever listens understands you know understands where we're that we're coming that we're leading with love and that god is the ultimate source and we need to find ourselves being about his business yes Amen. um and this was a wonderful conversation once again oh my god i'm gonna have to tell somebody about it before the podcast even airs <laughs> um but you too i just want to thank you both again for being here Thank you and for I want to give my listeners the opportunity to follow you all and know, learn about who you guys are, how I'm learning about who you guys are. So if you want to just shout out your social media, where, where we can follow you. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> uh, my name is Reagan Mills and I um, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Reagan. Andrew Mills, R-E-A-G-A-N-A-N-D-R-E-W, Mills, M-I-L-L-S. It's the same for both. And are on Facebook, just Reagan Mills. And that's where I do a lot of interacting with people and stuff like that. Um, And so, yeah. And my name is on my Instagram. It's I actually have two, Tamika E. Singleton. That's T-A-M-I-K-A-E-S-I-N-G-L-E-T-O-N. And I also have a blog called for the good girls so you can follow me on that page as well that's f-t-g-g-i-r-l-s i have facebook too but i don't be over because all the church aunties be over there so i stay on instagram (laughs) (laughs) yes we have to move around from the church aunties sometimes sometimes it's necessary um But again, thank you all for being here. I look forward to seeing the light that God is going to continue to shine on you both. Um, I pray for you as you pray for me. Thank you all for being here.